Welcome back to another cyclocross race video and we are at Wessex League. I think it's round 12, round 13. If you saw my last video or a picture of my bike, you will know it as a mud bath. My bike was absolutely covered. But I was one bike in this race. I mentioned it in the last video. So off the start, I was worried because I was thinking the bike's going to get caked. It is going to be a nightmare. And it's just hard work. I've got so much respect for people that one bike it. But I apologize for any mud that gets on the screen because it's an absolute nightmare trying to keep it clean while racing. But we're about to get underway. And if you look to my right, Angus has an absolute blinder of a start. Watch this. Absolutely full send. Look at that. Boom, boom, boom. I was like, all my days, here we go. I was like, I've been dropped in the first 10 metres, but fear not. And just to my left there is Callum McLeod. The bloke's an absolute monster, and you'll see why in a second. But he shuts down the gap. I jump on the wheel, and you can see the mud flicking up already. So in, look at that. I mean, what can I do? I've tried to clean it off there. If you squint through, you can see Callum tries to move up past Angus before we get into the off-camber section, and I just slot in behind. I'm going to switch to Sarah's camera there because that was muddy as but you can see the three of us so there's Callum, Angus and me off the start we're only like 60 seconds in but after this off camber if you squint through this bit of mud you can see Callum's distance us already and that is because he is so fast through the technical sections look up ahead he's already gapped us it was that was the 10 seconds of seeing his back wheel and we were he was gone but I managed to shut this gap down to Angus I was like I need to get back on his wheel Honestly, not to be negative, I knew first place was a bit out of reach when I saw him on the start line, but I was like, a good chance to get second. So I jumped on Angus's wheel here, and I think coming into this next little section, he makes a little mistake just here, so I'm like, just there, he runs a bit wide, and there was a rut. So I was like, sod it, I'll go past, give it some beans, and see what I can do. So I've come through, I'm now sitting in second place, and if you look just ahead as we go around this corner, you can see Callum going around the top corner there. And I thought to myself, I want to try and shut this down. Come on, give it some berries, see what you do. If you bury yourself, go too deep, who cares? It is the penultimate Wessex League race, and I had an absolute mare here. Watch how low I run down, and then you'll see the bike skid to the right there. Almost stacked it. It was almost you can't park there, but I managed to just put a foot down and save it. But it absolutely killed my speed, and those little mistakes just open up the gap every time. To, to the guy in front of you and you just can't afford to do them when you're at the pointy end of a race and you're racing against someone that's up there and has UCI points and national rankings much higher than mine. You can't afford to do that. So right now I'm back chasing and I'm thinking I've got to just see what I can do and it was sort of... I'm already looking ahead and I'm thinking that gap has gone and we are, what, half a lap in. It's absolutely mental when you see the standard of riders that are in front of you and when someone good turns up. But you can see here the mud and I'm just trying to stick to any green grass. And this slippery bank here, I decked it twice in practice. So straight away I decided to get off and run. But he's not a million miles away at this point and in my head I'm sort of thinking you know what you can probably shut this down but the reality is I definitely couldn't I didn't have the legs didn't have the fitness and didn't have the skills it was super slippy and as we get further into the race the big problem for me was just managing how much mud was on my bike. Like, it doesn't actually look that bad. Some of it was rideable, but it was like that claggy mud that was just picking up, picking up, and it was making the bike just so heavy. And it was torture, I'm not gonna lie. It killed me physically, mentally up this bank it started to get really hard and then towards the end of the race I couldn't change gear but enough of the excuses I'm in second place and you can see here how important I am hugging the tape right now just trying to find 
any grip possible. But you come around this corner, this is back into the start straight now. And I come over this side and I'm like, nope, there's nothing over there. And I'm looking absolutely everywhere now. Where is their grip? And then I come right over and I'm just like hugging the tape. The risk you have with doing this though, is if your handlebars get caught or that tape gets caught, you can have an absolute mare. And you'll see later in the video, I do have an absolute mare in the tape, but it's all about when you're riding one bike, what I learned during this race, it is about damage limitation to keeping as much mud off your bike as possible. So sometimes you've got to think, I've got to hug the tape or I've got to get off and run, but you can just see on the right, that is the gap Callum had. So he was round the corner and into the next one. It was probably at that point, maybe a 30 second gap. I've jumped on a little bit now because the camera got absolutely covered. This was my first mistake just there. I didn't get that mound right. Look, I'm not even moving now. I was in the wrong gear, absolute chopper move, which allowed Angus to get back on my back wheel. And I think this was the next mistake here where he now might go past me. So coming into the off camber section through this mud, I think I clip that there, bang, I almost went man down. That is what I'm talking about. You're trying to hug the tape, but the problem is, if your handlebar catches it, you can have an absolute stinker. I lost all my speed and Angus come past me. And right now I was like, you've just got to jump on his wheel and go with the move. I'd burn a few matches trying to unsuccessfully close the gap down to Callum on lap one but Angus changes bikes and that allows me just to get on his wheel because he didn't have a very good remount there and I was like just dig in now go with it but I know there's a saying I can't think what the saying is off the top of my head like control the controllables or something like that but it was absolutely destroying my head Every time, I know you shouldn't let, let it affect you, but every time Angus done a bike change, it just mentally affected me. Look at the gap he put into me because of the extra speed. And I was just working my absolute backside off to try and shut it down. And I was saying to myself, just dig in, dig in, dig in. I know the bike's heavier and it just killed me, the acceleration. But he pits here, which actually actually allows me to go back past because this side wasn't a great side to pit on because it was downhill. But as soon as he got that new bike, a fresh, clean bike, the acceleration in pace was absolutely mental. Look at him come past me here. He absolutely flies past me, gets into this uphill section quicker. And it messed with my head. I've... It was a weak ride from me mentally letting it affect me. But it does. I think other people that have raced one bike will probably admit it's affected them as well when you see someone come past you on a fresh bike and they put that acceleration in. And there's only so many times you can respond to it. My bike's probably like two kilos heavier. And then to add to that, it's like the mental battle, knowing everything's clogged up, your gears aren't quite changing nicely. And I was just like, just dig in now. You can see I'm just clinging to the tape again as much as I can to find any grass to stay on his wheel but like I said a lap later I'm still there but honestly at this point I was just hanging on for dear life there was every acceleration hurt my soul hurt my legs it was putting me down mentally and I think coming into this next section here is when I make my first big mistake I don't get up the bank it allows the gap to open and already I was in a hole from shutting down previous accelerations and stuff like that and I couldn't afford to make that mistake there and that was it that was the big mistake that cost me second place in this race so I've dropped back into third now and I didn't give up I battled on with absolutely everything I had you can see he's just on the right coming out of pits there and I just couldn't close the gap down the weight of my bike the not changing gears and just the grind it got to me as the race went on and you can see it was just the rest of the race I was just sort of then in no man's land I was probably about 20 seconds within like two or three laps Angus put like 20 30 seconds into me and there's nothing I could do and in the end I had to go into like damage limitation mode to protect 
third place. So you'll see I'm coming into this section. I actually get off and try and run this section here, which ended up being a terrible idea, but it turned into damage limitation, trying to not get my bike too clogged up. I was having to run and then this next section here, off the off camber, a little sneaky move there to get past. Um, you'll see I dismount here and decide to run and like I'm just not a fast enough runner. I was absolutely busting a gut here but it was damage limitation at this point and that is what you've got to sometimes do in cyclocross races. But you can see, look, the amount of chains that were dropping every lap. And this was one of my favourite bits. I'm passing Rob on the right here. And if you listen closely. He was going absolutely nuts at me. And I absolutely love that. He was like shouting, you can shut that gap. Up, 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 up. And I was like, I can't. I'm absolutely hanging out. I'm on the absolute rivet here. And... That was it, I couldn't shut the gap down. I worked my backside off. I've got nothing but respect for people that turn up and one bike it. I was super lucky that I didn't drop my chain. But it's another week gone and it's another f podium for me and a third place finish. Hopefully I can get that top spot. We've got one more race left to do it. Fingers crossed. Callum McLeod doesn't turn up and all the other fast people don't turn up so that I could get the top spot. No, I'm only joking. I want to get the top spot when all the hitters are there. I want to feel like I've absolutely whacked it, deserved it. I've sorted my pit crew for this weekend for tomorrow at Crow. So fingers crossed I can get a good result and hopefully get second place in the league. I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Nothing but respect for the people that won bike it. I went hard in this race. I gave it my absolute all and it was probably my best performance legs wise and the way I rode this season. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.